After owning the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 for about a month, do I think that this is the best camera for content creation? Absolutely. I've been using this thing pretty much everywhere that I go. There are so many reasons why this is a better setup than having a mirrorless or a DSLR, which I don't think too many people are using those. There were so many aspects about this thing that make it better than the conventional or what everyone has been using for content creation for so many years. Would I consider this camera a game changer? Absolutely. And let me explain to you guys why. Let me preface this by saying I am not a videographer. I am a photographer. I dabble with video a little bit, but so minimal that I, I would not even consider myself any we're close to a videographer. However, I do think that that might be a positive when it comes to a review of this camera gimbal. Because I feel like a lot of the people that are gonna use these cameras are not gonna be professional videographers who know the ins and outs and know every nuance about video. Having a camera that you can just turn on and start to record, it's gonna give you amazing footage it's gonna give you really steady footage. That is a huge selling point. Not only that, the size of this camera is another tremendous part about it. For a little size comparison between the Osmo Pocket 3, this tiny little thing that you're seeing, versus what you would normally have to carry in order to vlog, which would be something like this. And even this is a much smaller form factor than what vloggers used to carry. This is a Sony ZV E10, and this is a 28 to 70, 3.5 to 5.6, so it's not the best lens, which means if you put an even better lens, more than likely it's gonna be even bigger than this. You know, you have this entire setup, which is not nearly as stable as an Osmo Pocket 3, it really becomes a no-brainer which one seems like a better option for content creation, for being on the go, for filming while things are moving fast. We use this Osmo Pocket a lot for behind the scenes for engagement sessions, for weddings. We've used it on about four or five weddings already. We've used it on a bunch of engagement session ceremonies. I understand how size matters because if I have to carry that entire setup plus carry all my equipment to shoot the job how it needs to be shot. It's gonna take a lot more thought behind it than flipping this little screen and hitting record. So as you guys have been seeing, we've been posting a lot more videos in the last few weeks. A big reason for that is this camera that I'm filming this with. There's not too many pieces of equipment that I would say are game changers, this would be one of them. Let me explain why. So a lot of the times, if you wanna do some content creation, if you wanna go and vlog, if you wanna film something outside, you either take a mirrorless camera, which is nice because they're a lot smaller than the DSLRs from back in the day, but you have to remember to take a tripod, you have to take a little microphone on top. Are those cameras still better in many ways than this thing? Yes, but when you break it down and you kind of average everything out, this is a, what the hell was that? This is a much better solution to almost every problem. So even the microphone right now, I'm outside, there's some ambient noises outside. You guys can hear me clearly. The reason I can say that is because I've been testing this thing out enough where I'm confident when I'm filming because there's a microphone in the front, there's one on the side, and there's another one on the other side. So I know what it's picking up. That's another reason why I didn't wanna rush and post this video as soon as I got it or after a day of testing. I really wanted to run it through its paces. And after, I think it's been like three or four weeks, I can give you guys my honest assessment. So if you're a beginner content creator, if you are just an amateur content creator, would I recommend this? Or would I say like this has my stamp of approval? Yes. And the reason I can say that in a sense, for me, if I were looking for a review, I would prefer to get a review from somebody that's not an expert in videography and all the technical aspects and all the techniques and all that. I want to hear it from someone that picks up a camera, goes out and shoots, and okay, what are your thoughts on that? So if that's who you are, let's get into it. Let's get into a proper review that isn't gonna be all numbers and equations at you guys. So one of my favorite things about it is what you guys are seeing right now is how freaking steady this thing is. If you look at me right now, I'm walking and I'm not trying necessarily to be as steady as I can be. I'm trying to hold it somewhat steady, but I'm not going crazy trying to really, really over exaggerated. I took this camera for a run to see how it did if I were, let's say, a fitness influencer. If you guys are into fitness and you wanna record your workouts, you wanna record your runs, how is it gonna do when you're running full speed? Is the camera gonna be shaking all over the place and you're gonna give people seasickness or is it gonna be steady enough where it's still gonna be a very deliverable product? All right, so before I get completely winded and I can't talk, you guys let me know. What do you think? And from what I saw, I mean, you guys are seeing it right now, I thought it was tremendous. It really, really held everything extremely steady. And I promise you guys, I wasn't trying to hold it 
and over exaggerate how good the steadiness is as far as detail and quality goes you can judge for yourself if you look right now it is 3 p.m so it's not the most ideal lighting situations to be shooting at it's also not the worst so you can see there's detail in the highlights there's detail in the shadows overall really really satisfied with how much range you get on top of that i'm not shooting in d-log d-log is a format that's going to be a lot more flat so you can later play around with it and do color grading and all that like i said i want to grab this camera i want to go shoot and i want to deliver it to, to be able to post as much as possible for you guys so the idea behind this channel is i'm not trying to just boost my own ego and and talk endlessly to a camera what i want to do is share something with you guys that hopefully you can go out and use by shooting in the normal mode instead of the d-log mode where i get less range i guess but it's already but it's already colorized so it looks pretty clean to begin with it makes my workflow a lot easier i may go back and start using d-log the more that i get into it but like i said if you're getting into content creation Putting it in normal mode, in my opinion, is going to be better. So you're not going, why are my colors looking so flat? Why do I need to do so much work in post? Put it in normal mode and just go out and create because that's what this camera is for. I can honestly tell you guys that this thing has made me more excited about filming than any other camera that I've ever owned in the past. Right now, I also put something which is face tracking. So if you see as I'm moving, it's, it's showing me a little, you know what? I'm going to record with my glasses. As I move, the camera is moving with me and I see the green rectangle is moving along with me so it's a really great feature for when you're recording also when i took it on that run i did test that feature out it was when i first got it so i wasn't as familiar with it so face tracking is enabled i'm going to step out of the frame step into the frame and do some dips and let's see how well it does so i'm going to trust it i'm just going to look at the head and see if it's actually following me even with glasses on it says it's still tracking so let's see but you can see even when i turn my back to the camera it still follows me to a certain degree. And then when I come back and face it, it continues to follow again. As far as the face tracking goes, okay, it works pretty good, but of course it has its limits just like anything else. I noticed that once I was about 25, 30 feet away, it started to lose me and it didn't get me back. So once I kept going further, it lost me. I came back, it wasn't getting me again. Understand its limits, obviously review the footage, but for the most part, I would say it's definitely an extremely useful tool. Another feature that I don't think I've used as much, I probably will start using a little bit more, is time lapse it. If you set it up for a time lapse, obviously, it's gonna record a time lapse just like anything else. It gives you options as far as the intervals that you wanted to record and things like that. It also gives you the option to record time lapses while it's moving across the frame. So I haven't experimented with this too much. I've did it a couple of times later in the day, as you're seeing right now. And it looks pretty cool. I think that for transitional clips, when you're doing a vlog, you're doing a video and you're you know, moving from one scene to another, I think that's a great feature to use. I haven't played with it as much. I think that for our purposes, we're just moving around so much all the time that we don't have time to just sit there and record a, a time lapse. But the more I play with this, probably the more I'll use that feature. The Osmo Pocket 3 also comes with a DJI wireless microphone, which as soon as you turn it on, it automatically connects to the camera. I personally hate how those microphones look. I think that they look bulky. They look terrible. If you're wearing a suit at a wedding and you have that on, it just looks like a an, an eyesore it i hate the way it looks so dji came with a really really great solution which is you can use that microphone as a receiver so you can plug in a lavalier mic which is way way so small and then you can use that on the side of the lapel or you know wherever you're hooking it up so you don't have to have the, the big rabbit's ass right by your face i hate the way that looks if you can, if you can tell so dji giving you the option to record to that microphone from a smaller microphone i just feel like it was a very well thought out solution for someone that has a, a pet peeve like i do as far as price goes the osmo with nothing else just the osmo itself is 519 if you get the creator kit which is the one that i got it comes with an extra battery an extender pack which when you plug it in it charges your osmo first that's the way that works it comes with that it comes with the microphone that i just explained. which the microphone is good I'm, I'm not completely just talking bad about it I just think that it's for certain situations. So if I'm talking to you guys this close, there's no need to have a microphone. I'm close enough where you're going to hear what I have to say. If you're recording and it's and you're about 20, 30 feet away, then yeah, that makes absolute sense. That's when you use it. So it's great that it, it comes with that for when we have to do things where we're further away. It comes with the microphone, the extended pack, uh, the extender battery pack. It comes with a little case, obviously. It comes with the wide angle lens. Which, to be quite honest, the wide-angle lens and the regular lens, there's not that much of a difference. All right, so to show you guys what it looks like with and without. And look at that, that's face tracking working right there. 
So to show you guys what it looks like with and without the wide angle lens, that's right now the wide angle lens isn't out and we're gonna attach it and it works with a magnet. That's with it on. So like I said, it's not a huge, huge difference, but I mean, I guess it's there to give you a little bit extra width. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off, check it out. See the difference, that's wide angle. That's without the wide angle. So it's not like a true super wide angle lens, but it gives you a little bit extra, you know, width if you need, a, if you need to capture a little bit more detail on the side. Also, as far as, I should probably shut off the car before I kill myself with the exhaust, hold on. There we go, okay, we're back. So as far as other modes, night mode, night mode has been not something that I played with as much because I'm usually in bed by the time it's dark, but <laughs> I played with it a little bit as you're seeing in this clip right now, and it's pretty good. It gets a little bit grainy, of course, because you're pushing the limits of the camera, but it is extremely, extremely usable. Maybe I'll start using it. I'll definitely be using it a lot more during weddings once we shoot night shots and things like that. But it's just nice that it has that little feature as well. A few other things, you can tell the camera how you want it to start. So for me, I always start it facing towards me. So if I'm about to record and talk to you guys, it's going to be directly facing this way with face tracking enabled. If you prefer that it starts recording facing the other way, you can certainly do that. Just put it in your settings and it'll go towards the other side. Speaking of settings, settings are actually extremely simple. You swipe up on the screen, you swipe down on the screen, you swipe from the side, you swipe from the other side, it'll give you different options. So if you swipe from the left to the right, you're gonna be able to see the videos that you've recorded. And even listening to the audio of what it sounds like, what you're recording, it's actually really, really good. Like I remember the days of the GoPro where you would try to listen, it was just absolute garbage. This is actually really good. I can hear clearly what I'm saying and hear clearly if there's a noise that's obstructing what I'm actually saying so I can re-record if I don't, if I can't really hear what I'm saying. And then it also gives you, if you swipe up, you're gonna be able to switch through the options of what type of recording. So I always record 4K and 60 frames. Like I said in the very beginning, I am not a videographer. so the minimal amount of information in my brain that can handle is that at 60 frames i don't have to worry about the shutter speed as much i don't have to worry about it looking weird if if my shutter speed isn't right if i need to put nd filters i don't want to do any of that i want to be able to hit turn it on hit record and be good to go obviously you can record in other smaller settings as well but i feel like i do want to get a lot of quality out of this while making it easy for myself so i'm probably not going to shoot in d-log but i'm going to shoot in 4k at 60 frames so it's just turn it on and hit record and like with anything that has a gimbal you can change how fast you can move it so depending on what type of shot you want i have it on a like medium everything pretty much so it's not going to be really really fast if i pan it it's not going to be really really slow so i'm not looking for that you know slow fluid motion so i have it in a very average setting which is i think that most people that are buying this camera i think that that's what you're going to want i don't think you're going to want to be super super technical you can and it gives you all the settings under the sun to be able to do that however one thing that i'm going to say is when i was watching reviews about this camera is it was driving me mad how overwhelming it felt about how many settings it has to the point where i was like do i really want this camera because it just felt like it, it was too much you know what i mean like I, I do get overwhelmed when things are too complicated and there's there's too many options one thing i can tell you guys wholeheartedly is that if you want to keep this camera extremely simple just turn on and record you absolutely can you don't have to delve into every single setting and every single option but the beautiful thing is that it gives you all those options in there for when you get comfortable like once I get comfortable doing all these things is shooting very simple. I'm going to start doing time lapses more than likely. I'm going to start doing different things. But what this camera is for is for that beginner content creator, just like myself. And thank you, everybody who's been watching these videos. But that's what this is for. It's for the beginner content creators. It's for the advanced content creators so they can use every feature under the sun. But for us who are just getting started, turn it on and record. That's all we need. This camera's got you. I'm going to make a bunch of videos with all those little features once I really experiment with them. So if you guys want to subscribe and, you know, stay tuned on this little journey with this little camera, I'm going to be posting a lot of videos in the coming weeks where one video is going to be dedicated to time lapses. One video is going to be dedicated to shooting at night. We're actually setting up a shoot this Tuesday where we're going to be shooting with some of our equipment and we're going to have this camera in night mode the entire time. There's going to be another episode where I'm going to be talking about the slow-mo and how, how that works and what's the best way to use it. I don't want to give you guys all that information right from the front and it's not to hook you guys to come back. It really is because I don't want to make this video 40 minutes long. I think we're going to stop it right around here. 
I'm gonna go home and edit this, put it together, and stay tuned because like I said, I'll be posting a lot more about this camera, with this camera. Any questions that you guys have, please leave them below. I'm sure I missed a ton of things because like I said, I don't wanna overwhelm you guys. Leave a question and maybe I can make a video out of your question. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed and you made it to the end, if you wanna subscribe, that would be nice. If not, that's okay. Hopefully you find whatever you wanna find on YouTube. Thank you guys for watching.